Okay, today we have Ms. Jordan of Albany Beauty Academy, and she's going to tell us about her school, how she got started. Um, we really want to know how you went from being a correctional officer <laughs> to a school owner. So uh, introduce yourself and tell the world who you are, your name, and let's get on with it. Hello, um, my name is Takenya Jordan, and I'm the owner of Albany Beauty Academy. Um, I've been running my school now for four years. Um, like Chen said, I was a correction officer here in um, Georgia, and I was a correction officer for like 14 years. So I got tired of, of, of doing that. That was not my passion. It was just a, a paycheck to pay bills. Um, during that time, I still was going to school full time, working on adding my instructor license, nail license, and, and all of those licenses that I needed because I knew that sometime I was going to do a school, but I still want to get paid from the state, being a correction officer, you know, having that job and saving up my money with my 401 and everything that I had. And once I got that money, I just went ahead and retired. You have yeah. to have 10 years to leave the state. Hmm. Now, what made you want to do a school? Well, it was a, it was a need for it. Um, when I was younger, there was a cosmetology school that was probably on. And I just used to just sit back and watch the, the owner. The owner just sat at the, at the desk. She took all the money. All the students were working. And I was like, okay, free labor. They paying tuition and then you getting money off the door. You know, that was a no brainer. So I was like, okay, when I get older, I want to try the same thing they were doing, you know? But also with that comes the passion for training your students, making sure that they do get an education, that they can get their license and um, also provide for themselves and their family. It's not all about the money, but the money is, is, a, is an incentive. Okay. Um, so you did you go to beauty school? Yes, I did. I went to about three different beauty schools because the first school I started off with, it was a, a tech school, a state school. I just basically learned the state board and I needed more. You know, they wasn't giving me what I wanted. They just did um, the state board stuff. Once you get your license, nobody's not going to want a perm, a roller set. So I went back and, and, and got with other people and mentored with other people and took other classes to get that extra um, knowledge that I needed that they didn't give me. Now, did you tell people when you were getting ready to open your school? I told, I told my husband about it. I told some of my coworkers at the prison and they just looked at me like I was crazy. Like, you know, you supposed to work out there to the prison and you supposed to die out there, you know, and they looked at me like, yeah, right. You know, this all we gonna do is just have inmates. This all you gonna do. So I was like, I'm gonna show y'all. So what I did, I had to work in the tower sometimes. So when I go and work in the tower, I have my book up there and I'd be writing down my stuff that I need. I had my cell phone also. I wasn't supposed to have that, but I did. And I would go on there and look for my equipment, write everything down. I had a plan. So I did my plan and I ran with it. Now, so how I long did. would you sit in that tower? <laughs> we had, at that time, eight hour shifts. So, so I you had a there. rifle and some binoculars. Yes. But Chin, at that point in time, I, had, I, wasn't, worried, I wasn't worried about no inmates. <laughs> I was providing for my future at that time. So they got out, they just got out. <laughs> so you was up in the tower researching your school. <laughs> I sure was. And yeah, I was but, on that computer too doing my business plan. So the tower has an elevator or you had the steps? You had the steps. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. um, now, so you opened the school. What did your husband say? He has land. So we use his land for collateral. So okay. my husband supported me. He don't know anything about uh, hair or anything, but hey, he knew that I had that passion and he helped me with that. Now, there are a lot of barbers, stylists, nail technicians out there. Right. 
that are working in a shop or mm -hmm. working behind a chair and they are kind of um i guess they've been looking because i see you on instagram um social media right. and they wonder about opening a school so what would you tell them and why why is it that they are working in these shops when they could have a school because they trained to do that they trained to get a check a short check the checks that i get are long checks now i get one check and i can sit down for three months with that one check i don't have to work a day to day like that you get what i'm saying i'm getting older now i'm 40 years old i'll be 41 next month by the, i'll be 41 next month by the way i can't keep doing it forever you know so i just sit back i train my students when people come in my students greet the clients they do everything i just sit back and observe i write their grades down and that's it my money come in the bank it's direct deposit so what would you tell some barber stylist and nail tech because they're going to see this on YouTube. They're going to see right. it on Facebook. They're going to see it on Instagram. Right. I'll tell them, just do what your passion is. You already know how to cut hair. You know how to do nails. Just take it up to the next step. Just put that together and put it as a business. I'm going to tell you one more thing I didn't tell you all. I have a, a, a business degree and marketing degree. And I also had that um, my cosmetology background. I went on several interviews with the state trying to get out of being a correction officer because I wanted to be do probations. I could never land a job. I went to probably about 10 interviews. I said, God, why I can't get this job? What, what am I doing wrong? I went to school. I did everything right. I stayed out of trouble, never landed a job. Guess what he told me? Build your own job. Build your own job. So you hired got, yourself. Right. So that's what I did. I said, well, hey, I got the business degree and I had the cosmetology instructor um, um, diploma. I got all of my stuff and put it together and did my school. That was the best thing I did. I work when I want to work. I leave when I want to leave. I go on vacation when I want to go on vacation. It's good. Um, I remember when we first talked, because it was ironic, because you said you used to be a correction officer. Right. And with me being an ex-convict, uh, right. being in federal prison. So mm -hmm. um, any, did y'all have a barber in that prison? Yes, we had several barbers. They used to get the razor, break the razor, and put it on the comb. Uh -huh. That's how they cut each other hair that way. You know, they they... A lot of guys got talent, you know what I'm saying? A lot of guys inside the prison were making money, take care of their families in the prison, cutting hair, sending money home. You get what I'm saying? They might be in prison, but they make money. They mm -hmm. make money, they make plenty of money. And they send it, they, you know, they send it to their families where their families could live. So um, with that, we had a guy that, that used to cut hair on the big floor. So everybody give them a honey bun and they'll get their hair cut. They had a barber shop, but some of the guys didn't want to go to the barber shop. They wanted to get their hair cut there inside the dorms. So yeah, a lot of that went on. Now, what did you um when you heard about me, what did you think? I thought you was a blessing because like when I first started out of my school, I really didn't have a mentor. I had to do everything on my own. I had to spend thousands of dollars that I didn't have out of my 401 into uh doing my school from the ground up when i first got into this business my building was not a uh not set up for a school they repair computers inside of my building so i had to do my building from the ground up and mm -hmm. i got hit by a lot of uh, people that came in saying they were contractors they were hitting me up i didn't know nothing about something my husband you know by him being a man he paint cars he really don't know nothing about construction part either, you know? So he was like, well, they got a business. They, you know, they should be legit. No, they win. They were. Now, somebody that, um, when they see my open your school program or whatever, uh -huh. what would you tell them? 
I'll tell them to try you because you say you save people thousands of dollars. You know, um, right now I'm going to the stage of trying to get accredited. So that's a lot of thing that I didn't know about. I had to I had to hire somebody that cost thousands of dollars to do what I need that you charge probably half the price. You get what I'm saying? But I'm already linked up with this person, so I really can't break my contract. So I just got to move forward. So, you know, I have to pay extra amount of money for that. Now, um, when you first got started, was anybody willing to help you? Where there's nobody to help you. It's like when you do ask people that have schools, they don't want to share anything. They don't want to share information with you. You could be a hundred miles from them and they still don't want to share. It's like you, they don't want another school on the turf. You get what I'm saying? They don't want a newcomer. So they're not going to share with you at all. But with you, I found that you were sharing. It was like, wow, you know, this stuff that he's telling is what I went through and what I'm going through. You know, so it was refreshing to finally see someone in a black man that, that that's doing it and they can help you out and go through all that red tape because I went through a lot of red tape. You just don't understand how much I went through. <laughs> yes, a lot. Yes, it's a lot. <laughs> um, did you ever work at a salon? Well, I started off apprenticing with my uncle. Um, he had a barber shop in a beauty salon. So I was apprenticing with him. Now, let me tell you about the apprentices. I will never apprentice again. Um, my cousin had me paying her $25 a week. She was never hardly there. I didn't learn anything. I still was paying her. You get what I'm saying? And then she didn't teach me any book work. I, I still didn't learn anything, so I lost money with her. So I left her, and then I went to the, you know, the regular tech school here for cosmetology, and they did teach me a lot more than what she was teaching me because she was just taking my money. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? She just wanted her $25 a week. It was back in 2000. Mm -hmm. So, hey, I just should have went to school to begin with. Right. Um, what else would you like to leave the viewers? I, I'll say if you're working behind the chair and you've been behind the chair, I'll say for if you've been behind the chair five plus years, it's time to move to the next level. It's time to get what you're doing because when you get somebody that comes in your shop, if you own the shop, you got to retrain them. The, the school not showing them that stuff that, that you're going to show them. So you got to retrain them. So you are already doing the instructor part. You just need the, the license for a school. You are already teaching them. For free. And you're doing it for free. So get paid for it. That's some good information. I'm right. glad to hear this from a woman. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Okay. And then when they come in, they, they don't know about professionalism. They don't know how to uh, how to dress, how to speak. They don't know customer service. You know, you got to teach them all of that. You, I get some students that come in here, and I'm basically like their mom. You know, I have to tell them how to comb, that, comb your hair, fix your clothes up right, pull your pants up, all type of stuff, you know, it, you know that you have to work with them with, but it's rewarding. I like it. And they mm -hmm. come to school, they come here ready. They want to learn. They're thriving. I teach them how to open up a salon at my school. And that's what I teach them. When they leave here, they know what about equipment from. They know how to buy the equipment. They know how to get the, the equipment and proportion it up, how to use it. Don't use too much because you got to make a profit. Mm -hmm. They know all of this stuff. They, I, I teach them state board and beyond. So I've done braid, but I'm doing a braiding class here. So I'm going to have a braider here to show them how to braid. So once we finish with braid, braiding, um, I'm not good at cutting with um, the barber. I'm mm -hmm. going to have a barber come in here and do demos. So we do demos also in between and go on field trips. Well, that's smart because to own the school, I'm glad you talked about that because you don't have to know how to do all that. Because right, uh -huh. I had to school for 19 years, still to this day, and I've been licensed since 1990, so that's almost 30 years. Right. I, I don't know how to cut straight hair. I don't know how to do a relaxer. 
exactly. I don't know how to do it. I only know how to do one thing, cut kinky curly wave hair. Mm -hmm. But you hire other people that can I do sure that. Do. I outsource. I, what I do, I find somebody that's on Facebook that's real good. I meet with them. I talk to them. And if they're professional and they got their stuff, you know, going the way it needs to be, I invite them in here. I don't invite nobody that's not um, professional. You have to be professional to come to my school because I'm teaching them professionalism. Mm -hmm. So I can't have somebody that's, that's, that's out there just doing hair as a hobby to come in here because they're going to be looking at me like, Miss Joanne, where you get this person from? <laughs> right? Because yeah. I'm supposed to be teaching y'all how to be professional. Why she going to bring somebody that ain't even licensed in here to try to show up with the dude? How that going to look? You know, that's defeating the purpose. So also we do field trips. I'm taking them to the funeral home. Mm. We'll be going to the funeral home um, in about two weeks. Mm -hmm. So that's another avenue. <coughs> that's another that's avenue. We go, to the, we go to the funeral home because you got to know how to put somebody, family member in their casket. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Presentable. So that comes with makeup, cutting hair, um, their beard, that comes with polishing their nails, doing full sets on their nails. That's 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 a good living, and you don't work that long. You mm -hmm. only doing half of the head. Right. From 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 ear to ear, that's it. Because mm -hmm. they laying back. Right. So you do that half of the head. That's a hundred dollars. You do that makeup. That's sixty five. The person ain't gonna move. They laying there, so you ain't right. got to fight with them. Mm -hmm. They ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So I I let them know that money could be made all types of ways. Mm -hmm. A lot of money and need <clears throat> money, Jen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that you came on here okay. to share and talk about Albany Beauty Academy and your story about being a correction officer and being in a tower um and just transitioning from mm -hmm. being an employee to owning a school i mean that, right. that's great uh now you got financial freedom i'm sure you already had it because you got your great husband and you work too but right. um, time freedom yes doing something that you enjoy doing and getting paid you can't beat that you don't work it's like i'm on a vacation at work guy you get what i'm saying yeah. i'm on a vacation at work I love it. It's refreshing that I could just come in my own atmosphere. I could open my door and I don't have to say, well, oh, I don't want to deal with her today or him today. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's a peaceful environment. And my students, when they first get here, I let them know, hey, no negative vibes, here, only positive vibes. You know, we don't deal with all that crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have that type of attitude, this is not the school for you. We all about learning, helping each other, you know, and and I tell them how to build a brand. I show them how to build a brand now. They, the other when, when was that? Yesterday they made products. Hmm. They did a scrub, and they had to do a business field over their scrub. They had to tell me what ingredients they put in their scrub, how much it costs, and we pretend like we were selling it to companies like Walmart or Target. What fragrances it was, um, the directions on how to use it. And their target market. Were they targeting um, middle aged people, older people? They had to go and tell me about their product. So they enjoyed it. Um, everybody tried on everyone's um, scrub and they did a real good job. I teach them how to use public speaking because you need to know how to speak correctly. Mm -hmm. Public speaking. When a person come in, you got to speak to them. You got to consult them. You got to talk to them the whole time. They mm -hmm. need to learn that. Well, you teach them a lot. They I, too oh, much, man. really. But I, I love it because I'm all over the place. You get what I'm saying? I'm mm -hmm. teaching them the stuff that my teacher didn't teach me that I was yearning for my teacher to teach me. That's what I'm teaching my students. They're going to be better than these veteran stylists that's out there when they come out of your school. Right. I hope they do. I really do. But well, right now, you know, by me being in Southwest Georgia, we don't have a lot of uh, uppity or high class salons. You get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I'm trying to get them to think outside the box, do some different stuff besides you making the money 
and not putting it back into your equipment. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Some of those people that that been in salons, they still got that same equipment. 15, 20 years, 25 years, still got that same old stuff. Get rid of that stuff. Get some new stuff. Mm-hmm. Invest in your in your company. All right. Well, we're glad to hear your story. And um, when you get time, we want you back on. Okay, anytime. Can, uh, keep us enlightened on your journey with the school. It's always good to see and hear from other school owners. So I will be sharing this on Instagram, Facebook, mm-hmm. and YouTube. Okay. So we just had Miss Jordan from Albany Beauty Academy. I thank you very much for dedicating this time and information, Miss Jordan. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.